Okay, Shanisha, jo Shanisha Dodson is the founder of Black Girl Productions and an award-winning playwright. She holds a BA in psychology, MA in counseling, and an EDS, is that how you say it? EDS in education. In 2018, she was voted top 30 under 40 by M Lifestyle Magazine, top 25 women in business by Courageous Magazine, and top 35 women to watch by Women Doing It Big Magazine. Dodson is best known for giving up her six-figure income to pursue her God-given purpose in the arts. She has successfully written, direct, and directed, and produced three full-length productions. Her one-act play, uh, Vagina Rights, de debuted off-Broadway summer of 2017 and won Best Theatrical Production by New York City Success in the Arts. Her first children's play, Dog, Cat, and the Red Bird, was published by Drama Notebook. In her spare time, she enjoys writing, spending time with her loved ones, and encouraging everyone in her path to reach their full potential. Please welcome Shanisha Dodson. Well, hello everyone. Good again, I am Shanisha Dodson, and I'm here to tell you guys why I am fearless. So, from a small town of Arkansas, I was raised by a single parent, my mother. She worked two jobs most of my life. So watching her, the only thing I knew how to do was work, was grind, and just keep it going over and over and over again. I ended up being the first person in my family to graduate from college, and then I went on to earn three degrees from there. So as I was getting ready to graduate with my master's, I'm like, what am I gonna do with myself? Like, am I gonna do something with psychology, or am I gonna go to the, to you know, work in a theater, do something with the arts? And I ended up seeing a job announcement for the federal government. So I was like, hmm, let me try that. Let me see what happens. So they called, I ended up getting the job, and I moved to the D.C. area, where I spent about 10 years of my life. So once I got there, I set a goal. I said I wanted to start earning six figures before I turned 30. And I hit that at 28. And from that point, I was like, what am I going to do next? Like, I was good at my job because I worked really hard, but I started to feel something in my spirit that was telling me to let go. So I hung on to that job for probably three or four years longer than what I should have. But I was like, you know, if I quit, what's going to happen to my family? Because I supported a lot of people. I paid a lot of people bills, you know, just making sure everyone was okay. But I started to get this feeling and it got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. God kept saying, let go, but I'm being disobedient. So my life started to get tough. He started to put me into situations that I could not, you know, fight my way out of them. Because I have a very laid back personality, so I used to just roll things off my back. But God was like, let it go, let it go, let it go. So I was like, you know what? I'm still not going to be obedient. So I took a position overseas where I spent about a year and a half. And then one day I said, you know what? I'm going to be obedient. So I prayed. And God was like, let go. So I went into my job and I wrote one sentence. I plan to resign October the 15th, 2015. And I know when I hit sin that chaos was about to erupt. The overseas and you're quitting this job? So when my boss is called from DC, what's going on? Who did something to you? How can we fix it? You need to let us know what's wrong. But it was hard for me to tell them that I felt like it was a higher calling on my life. You know, because sometimes you speak to people and you have different religions and sometimes people don't believe in God. But I knew God was telling me to let go. Everything was gonna be okay. So that's where the fear is coming in. So I had to make that decision, you know, am I going to step out on faith or am I going to just sit here and just be sad? Again, I was good at my job, but I knew that it was a higher calling in my life. So I took that step. I stepped out on my faith. And a lot of people around me are like, are you crazy? Girl, you're giving up all that money to, you know, do something in the arts? Who gives up six figures to, to write plays for a living? Who does that? I was like, me? <laughs> Me, I'm going to do it. I've done it. So I gave it up. And once I did, it's like doors just started to open. I walked through the carpet with a whole bunch of celebrities, people I've seen 
been on TV for years. I started to win like a war after a war after a war. And I was like, God was different. He was like, you are obedient now. So now I feel like he started to expose me to things. Um, just like a glimpse of my future. Like, okay, if you do right, these are the things that you will, be, you will be exposed to. If you do right, this is the life that you can't live. So when I get up and I write, it doesn't feel like work. And every day I say, God, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for these opportunities. I'm thankful that I was um, obedient. And with God, it's just like the more time that I gave to him, the stronger my prayer life got, and it seemed like things were, were going smooth. So, you know, when everybody tells you the stories about letting go, it's not like it's all been smooth. That wasn't the case. I started to hit hurdles. And people were like, maybe you should just go back to your job and you won't have to deal with things like this. And you know, it got to the point where I was like, okay, I have to keep moving forward. I have to just keep going. And then here comes another hurdle. You know, now you work for yourself. How are you gonna keep this income coming in? What are you gonna do if, you know, things don't work out? Are you gonna go back to that job? Or are you just gonna keep moving and moving forward? So, as um, so I, I kept moving forward, kept moving forward, and I stayed focused, and that brings me to where I am today. And so, like she told you, what I do is write plays. I write, direct, I produce, I travel all over the U.S., and I bring awareness to social issues. <coughs> so every year, I set a goal as far as like the arts. What am I going to do this year that I didn't do last year? How many people can say that? How many people celebrate like the teeny, like teeny tiny goes? So do I. I feel like I lost five pounds. It's time to celebrate. <laughs> right. It's time to celebrate. Like she said, okay. I completed this this play. It's time to celebrate. And so that's the thing. As you achieve your goals, whether it be a small goal, celebrate it. Some people write daily goals. Some people write monthly goals. Some people write goals, you know, yearly goals. So what I do is some quarterly goals. As I check out those goals, I celebrate and I move on to, you know, the next thing. Because when you think about goals, you know, sometimes people say new year, new me, new year, new year's resolutions. And how many people can honestly say they completed everything on their new year new list? Anybody complete everything every year? I was like, I'm right now. <laughs> Things may 
may not always work out, but you won't know until you try it. Because in my case, that's what it was. Because I could have still been in my little comfy job, sitting at the desk, you know, traveling the world, shopping, doing all these things that I wanted to do. But I took a fearless route, and that's when I stepped out on faith. And people say, faith? Like, you really stepped out on faith? Yes, I did. That's when you step into that fire. Because you really don't know what's ahead. You don't know, you know, how your life is going to end up. I could have lost everything. Yeah, I had enough money saved up to last me about two and a half, three years, but what happens after that? What if my plays didn't work out? And I'm a serial entrepreneur, so what if my other businesses didn't work out either? <laughs> I like working for myself. Uh, but what if it don't work out? And that's a lot of things um, that people were asking me when I got ready to quit my job. A lot of people started sharing their stories. Hey, I want to do the same thing, and I tell everybody to pray about it. Because my situation can be a lot different than yours. Because it's just me. But I had friends that were married and had children. I was like, you got to pray about it until you get confirmation. Because I can't just tell you, hey, you need to quit your job. Mm -mm. You got to set a plan. Even when I knew it was time for me to quit and I was holding on, I still had goals. I, um, I sold one house, I downsized and got another house. I sold one car, I got a different car. Because I was like, I'm going to load my expenses as low as I could get them because I just didn't know, you know what was going to happen. So you got to pray about it and figure out what is best for you. Because what worked for me, it may not be the right thing. But I tell everybody, pray, I'm big, I'm praying, and praying, and praying. And somebody asked me, what does that grind mean on the t-shirt? I said, you got to pray, you got to keep working, and just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again until you get that outcome that you, that you want. Because sometimes we want things, and it's not really what God has planned for us. So we get confirmation that we should not be doing these things, but we continue to do them. And then we question, why is this not working out for me? You know? Why am I not succeeding in this? Why am I seeing other people succeed in this? Because that's not what you are supposed to be doing. You got to be obedient. You got to be focused. And you got to listen. Even when times get tough, you got to keep pushing. Because I had some issues too once I quit. I was like, you know what? Um, I didn't factor in that I'll be paying for health care out of my pocket. And let me tell you, that health care was more than my car payment. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of things that you have to prepare for. You got to be able to clean. Again, you gotta be focused, and you don't hear me say over and over again, pray. <coughs> pray and listen. Once you get that answer and that confirmation, do what God tells you to do. Because you know, I mentioned sometimes I got put into corners. So with me, it was matching up with people who personalities were completely opposite of mine. Like very evil spirits, and people just do evil and mean things for any reason. That's kind of like who God paired me up with. Because he knew I was like, you know what, I'm finished. It's time to bow. So. The more I did listen, the more things started to happen. So when I was overseas, I started to get sick. Now I'm in my early 30s, I started having chest pains. I was like, am I having a heart attack? So I went to the doctor and it was like, it's stress. It's stress. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna push that aside and keep working this job. My legs started to swell up. They was like, maybe, um, maybe it's like a blood clot. And I was like, what? A blood clot? And they was like, yeah, they look, there's nothing wrong. Nothing at all. Then I started to have bad headaches. And every time it came back to stress. Because what was I doing? Still holding on. Still holding on. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to die on the city, so I'm going home. I'm going home and be with my family. So that's what I did. But that's my story. You know, single parent household. And even growing up in that small town of Arkansas, I knew that the world had different things to offer. And that's why I always pushed myself to achieve my goals. I worked really hard. And it was difficult because sometimes you have to, to see other people in those roles in order for you to say, hey, maybe I can do this. But I didn't. I just knew to keep going. Keep going, keep working, keep writing. And then I started to see, you know, the success and as people say, the fruits of your labor. So everything started to, to work out. So my thing is, is just to sometimes encourage yourself and motivate yourself. Because I have to be honest, like after I quit, it was times where I was like, can I get through this? Is everything going to work out? And I would sit there and motivate myself, girl, you can do it. Keep going. Don't give up. You get this. And so sometimes I just have to talk to myself. I write my notes down. I write my goals down. And sometimes I go back and look and see, like, what goals did I achieve? I was like, okay, I got the majority of the ones that I wanted. And that's enough for me to keep going. Because I have to motivate myself. And when you pursue your goals, sometimes those are the type of things that you have to do. 
motivates you to step up. Sometimes um, people will approach you. Like for example, I was going through some days, so I had kind of made this uh, Facebook status about, you know, you can do whatever you want to do, don't put age on it. Because a lot of times I meet people and they're like, okay, I'm too old to do this. I'm like, mm -mm, you still live, you can't breathe. <laughs> <Mom? laughs> yeah, so and this lady was like, you know, your post inspired me to go back to college. And I think she was like, and maybe her late 50s, I was like, what? She was like, yeah, it inspired me to go back to college. That was one of the, the goals that I always wanted to achieve. I was like, all right, girl, go back. So she went and she, she's doing well. So when you motivate yourself, sometimes you're motivating other people too. So that goes back to how you carry yourself. When people see you stepping out on faith, that may give them the courage to do it too. So I've had a lot of people say, you encourage me. You inspire me to do this. And I'll be like, okay, that's good. Very good. Very good. So sometimes those are the things that you have to do. And so that's the thing. Just, just stay focused and don't give up. Whatever your heart desires, just pursue it. Even if you don't have anyone who's done it before, you may be the first person in your family to do it. Just keep doing it. Because when I graduated from college, like when we started, I didn't know how to do any paperwork. I didn't know anything about financial aid. It was just like, how do I get started? And no one in my family, you know, had went to college. So it was just like an experiment, but we got through it. And again, it goes back to that goal setting. Like I got my bachelor's degree in three years. I was like, I'm about to work, get this done, and get up out of here. And then I just continued to, to go to school. I was always just very driven. And I was always a little different. Because people was partying, but I was doing my work. And I partied too, but I did my work. So sometimes you just have to cut out things. And you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you got to do what other people can't do in order to live the life that you want to live. That is very true. I could have still been out, you know, shopping, jet setting, all over the world. But I gave it up. Because I knew, again, it was a hard call on my life. And I told my family and friends, I'm like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. 